In 235, Sima Yi was promoted to the Grand Commandant for his achievements in defending the Western Territories. He established a military market in Chang'an, but an official named Yan Fei reported that the soldiers had been insulting the people in the city. Sima Yi summoned the market captain and then personally flogged him with a hundred strikes in front of Yan Fei. Such was the strict conduct in which Sima Yi supervised his officials and soldiers. When a famine broke out in the northern plains, Sima Yi sent more than 5 million hu of grain from Chang'an to Luoyang to aid in disaster relief efforts. According to the Book of Jin, around Lao, Niu Jin was sent by Sima Yi to repel a raid from Ma Dai, where they killed more than a thousand Shu soldiers. The next year, when Cao Rui asked about capable and virtuous men, Sima Yi recommended Wang Chang as a talent. He also presented a white deer he had caught whilst hunting to the emperor, who said, when the Duke of Zhou assisted King Cheng, he presented white pheasants to him. Now you're in charge of Shangzi and you present a white deer. Isn't this a sign of loyalty, cooperation, long-lasting stability and peace? Contrary to the Emperor's sign from the past, Gong Zun Yuan rose up in Liao Dong Commandery and declared independence. He had recently defeated Guan Xu Jian, so in 238, Sima Yi was asked to lead an army to suppress the rebels. After analysing the situation, he stated the enemy would either flee, resist, or defend their capital city, the final option being the worst choice and most likely to be used. He said he would need one year to lead the troops to Liao Dong, deal with the initial resistance, suppress the revolt, and then return to repose. As many men had already been conscripted into the army, forced into manual labour, or recruited to work on Cao Rui's palace construction projects, Sima Yi felt that launching an invasion would burden the common people too much, and lead them to resent the Wei government. He advised the court to halt the projects to deal with more pressing issues first. And so it was that many elders, family members, old friends, officers and officials came to attend Sima Yi's ceremony at Luo Yang's Ximing Gate. Ni Yujin and Hu Zun served as his subordinates to command the 40,000 men who were about to go to war. During the extensive and lively festivities in which Sima Yi met with Sima Fu and Sima Shi, he began sighing feeling emotional and dissatisfied, then sang a poem. Heaven and earth unfold and open up, the sun and moon are very bright, coming to a border meeting, a final effort in distant lands. I am about to seep away the dirty pack, returning to pass by the old hometown, respectful and pure for 10,000 li, all are equal in every direction, announcing success and returning at an old age awaits me, not my old hometown. Cao Rui saw Sima Yi off as he advanced out of the city with the army. Along the way, he was reinforced by Guan Xu Jian's forces in Yu province, which included the Xianbi Auxiliary Unit, which was led by Mo Hu Ba. This unit had fragmented away from the other Xianbei chiefs after the fall of Bu Dugan and submitted to the Cao Wei dynasty. Gong Zun Yuan requested reinforcements from Sun Chuan, who eventually replied. Sima Yi is well versed in the military arts. He uses military strategy like a god and defeats all who stands in his way. I am deeply worried for you, my brother. According to Sima Yi's earlier predictions, the Wei army arrived on time. Gong Sun Yuan sent his grand general Bei Yan with Yang Zuo to build their camps along the Liao River and await Sima Yi's arrival. Many generals were eager to attack straight away, but Sima Yi counted that with this many enemy soldiers, the capital of Liao Dong would be comparatively empty, so could be taken with ease. Hu Zun was sent with a decoy unit to the south with banners and drums, making it look like the army would move there with a large force. The enemy took the bait when Bei Yan took pursuit, but Hu Zun found his way across the river and then broke through the enemy line of defence. Meanwhile, Sima Yi had secretly crossed the river to the north, sank his boats, burned his bridges, built a long barricade along the river and then started marching towards the capital. Foreseeing that his enemy would try to intercept them, Sima Yi made the appropriate preparations to win the incoming engagement. The opposing generals realised that they had been tricked and caught up with Sima Yi at Mount Shu one night. Bei Yan was ordered into battle, but was defeated by Sima Yi, who could now continue his march unopposed. He began laying siege to the capital upon arrival, but July brought with it the summer monsoons. Heavy rain fell for over a month, so much that even the ships could sail the length of the flooded Liao River, from its mouth at Liao Dong Bay, all the way up to the walls of Xiang Ping. Sima Yi was determined to maintain the siege, despite the water being several feet high on level ground. His officers clamoured about and constantly proposed to change camps, so Sima Yi eventually executed anyone who proposed this idea, such as Zhang Ling, 
who had disobeyed orders by trying to move his camp anyway. The rest of the officers subsequently became silent and followed Sima Yi's command. The high water level made a complete encirclement of the city more difficult. The defenders were able to sail out to forage the land and also pasture their animals. To put an end to their gathering, many generals wanted to pursue the foragers and herders, but Sima Yi forbade anyone from doing so. He explained that he has been worried that the rebels might flee, that war is an art of deception, we must be good at adapting ourselves to changing situations. The rebels have a numerical advantage and are aided by the rain. Hungry and as distressed as they are, they are not willing to give up. We must make a show of inability to put them at ease. To alarm them by taking petty advantages is not the plan at all. Back at the capital, many advisers became concerned about the floods, so proposed to recall Sima Yi. Being aware of his abilities, Tao Rui turned down the proposal. Besides, around this time, a Goguryeo noble who was also a keeper of records from his home state had arrived with several thousand men to aid Sima Yi. A frightened Gong Yuan interpreted a comet in the skies as an omen of destruction, so he sent Wang Jian and Liu Fu to negotiate terms of surrender. They promised Gong Zun would bind himself, then present himself to Sima Yi once the siege was lifted. Wary of Gong Zun Yuan's double-crossing past, Sima Yi executed the two messengers and told him he requires an unconditional surrender. Wang Jian and his following wanted me to raise the siege and withdraw my men. Is this real? These two men were clearly dotards who must have failed to convey your true intentions. I've already put them to death on your behalf. If you still have anything to say, and send a younger man of intelligence and precision. The next round of talks were quickly dismissed by Sima Yi as a waste of time when it was offered to have a hostage sent to the Wei court. In military affairs, there are five essential points. If you can fight, you must fight. If you cannot, you must defend. If you cannot defend, then you must flee. The two remaining options are either surrender or death. As you have not brought yourself before me already bound, you are determined to have death. As such, there is no need of sending any hostage. It should be noted that Sima Yi's previous suggestion of further negotiations was an act of malice that gave false hope to Gong Sun Yuan. At the same time, it prolonged the siege, placed further strain on the supplies in the city and also the men. The waters eventually subsided, and the way encirclement was hastily complete. They dug under the city walls, used hooked ladders to scale them. Battering rams attacked the gates, whilst mounds were also built for siege towers and catapults. The speed at which the siege was tightened caught the defenders completely off guard. They had gotten used to obtaining food so easily that no real effort to stockpile any had taken place. As a result, famine and cannibalism soon broke out in the city, during which Yang Zuo surrendered to Sima Yi. On the 29th of September, the city finally fell. Gong Sun Yuan and Gong Sun Xu both fled to the southeast, but were pursued by the Wei forces and killed on the Liang River. The future administrator of Xiang Ping, Liu Shun, and Xian Yu Si had been sent with a separate naval force to attack the commanderies of Li Lang and Dai Fang in modern day Korea. Eventually, all of Gong Sun Yuan's holdings were subjugated, whilst his head was sent to Luoyang for public display. Having entered the city, Sima Yi erected a pair of guidepost standards to separate the recent and more long term rebels and systematically purged around 2,000 officials. He also executed all of the men over the age of 15, so some 7,000 people were put to death and their bodies were used to raise the victory mound. The remaining 40,000 households and 300,000 citizens were all pardoned. All who were deceived or misled by Wen Yi are forgiven. People of the central states who desire to return to their old hometowns are free to do so. Sima Yi also freed Gong Zun Gong, the previous administrator of the city who had been imprisoned by his nephew. Sima Yi next visited the graves of the two loyal officials who tried to stop Gong Zun Yuan's takeover, Lun Ji and Jia Fan. He rehabilitated their burial sites and erected new mounds over their graves. One night, Sima Yi dreamt that Cao Rui was on his knees on a pillow. He asked him to come have a look at his face, but it appeared different than usual. When he woke up, Sima Yi started to sense that something was wrong. Back at the capital, Cao Rui became seriously ill but he had also originally planned to exclude Sima Yi from the regency. He wanted to appoint Cao Yu, Xie Hao Xian, Cao Shuang, Cao Zhao, and Xin Lang to help his adopted son Cao Fang administrate in his absence. But Liu Fang and Sun Zi had disagreements with this, and they were able to persuade Cao Rui to change his mind. He finally decided to appoint Cao Shuang and Sima Yi as co-regents instead, 
whilst Chin Lang and the others were all dismissed from office. By now it was winter, and many of the soldiers were suffering at Xiang Ping, but there was a surplus of Ru, so somebody suggested to give them to the soldiers. A Ru is the traditional coat or jacket that people of the time often used to wear, either over or under a skirt-like garment. The padded coats are the property of the government, no one is allowed to give them to others without permission. After banning the coats, Sima Yi ordered for all the soldiers over the age of 60 to retire from service, and for the dead or wounded to be sent home. He then led the armies back to Luoyang, but sent an emissary before he left to arrange for Cao Rui to hold a victory celebration for him in Ji. Sima Yi had been rewarded with an additional county to his mark estate. When he was in Ji County, he received an order to return to Luoyang via a faster route through the Guangzhong region. He received five more orders within three days as he travelled by the way stations so he could see there was an urgent situation back at the capital. He used a light, fast-moving chariot to ride across the rest of the Beiyu region, stopping only once for a brief rest, enabling him to reach Luoyang the next day. He was led to the Jiafu Hall in the Imperial Palace to meet with Cao Rui, where he saw that the Emperor was critically ill. Sima Yi had tears in his eyes when he asked about his condition, but Cao Rui told him, I have matters to entrust you, now that I meet you one last time before I die, I have no more regrets. He called into the chamber the Prince of Qin, Cao Shun, and the Prince of Qi, Cao Fang. Whilst pointing towards Fang, he stated, This is he, look at him carefully, and do not make any mistake. He then told the seven-year-old Cao Fang to hug Sima Yi as if he would hug his own father. Fang embraced him by the neck, then Sima Yi started weeping until his forehead hit the floor. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.